We have begun the new style. We're trying it. This is a very interesting plot because today we're at Chiu Chien View. Chiu Chui Chien. Ah, yeah, yeah, then just now I. This is Joanne, this is Yongjun. Come, draw us around. So in other words, when you come out, right, you as if like you're on Titanic, you know? Then you see then. <laughs> so now that you have a quick glimpse, we're gonna kickstart this home tour. Let's go. Firstly, we have to have a look at this pool because this pool will give us a very good identification of this particular land plot. This land plot is in a corner plot, which on my right flank will be the onslaught of the row of landed houses, as well as towards this T-shape right here towards the back. At the back here, this is about 16.2 meters. If we were to flip back towards the front, you realize that at the front is like a ship. This was completed in the early 1990s. Not many homes nowadays will have this kind of rounding shape towards the front. That is to, of course, take advantage of the land shape, a little bit like a trapezium kind of shape. However, the architecture has been very well crafted. To fit in this very huge SUV right here, builder also took advantage of this pointy portion right here to have a mini lap pool right at the front. So this is perfect for your kids to enjoy. Predominantly, the home is facing more towards south. This home is all about the price point. It's almost impossible to get a detached status that's free home for six and a half million right now because if I were to just zoom in into the amount of supplies right here in D5, you can only see three particular listings. And if I were to zoom out into the entire Singapore, there's probably only less than 20 over listings that's available at six and a half million dollars free home, detached status. This home suits landed home buyers that are actually hunting for a quantum plate because at this particular price point, all you can get is perhaps a brand new inter-terrace that was fully built on by the developer and that will belong to like a category 4 of an inter-terrace new build. A quick refresher, Cat 1, Cat 2 and Cat 3 and Cat 4 are categories that we use to categorise for our landed home buyers. Category 1 will be landed homes that the moment you buy them, you will definitely have to tear down and rebuild the entire home. Category 2 will be homes about 30 years old and then you need to pump an A&A &A or reconstruction. Cat 3 will be homes that are very suitable for you to do up your own renovation. You don't have to touch the structure and Cat 4 will be brand new homes that developers has already acquired, rebuilt them for the past two years and then now it is a full build status for you to purchase on the resale market. When we zoom into District 5, you realise that District 5 has only 2,000 over homes available in terms of its landed supply stock. And out of these 2,000 over homes, there are only 200 over detached homes. You can calibrate demand for the future master plan of Greater Southern Waterfront. Yet at the same time, you can enjoy current demand from National University or NUH as well as One North Bona Vista. This is usually the enclave that a lot of people are hunting for. Now, the latest subdivision rule is that a detached home must be at least 400 square meters. That would mean that it's about 4,000 plus square feet. And if you were to translate to an average land PSF price in D5, that would be at about 2,000 odd dollars per square foot. So you're looking at landed properties that's at least 8, 9, 10 million dollars onwards. And for District 5, most detached homes are in the range of 10 to 15 million dollars. But however, for this particular home, this is a detached that is at six and a half million dollars. And thus, that presents quite a wonderful opportunity for you to own a detached status, but at the same time, you're entering into the landed market at less than 6.8 million dollars. I've seen the northern lights, the British countryside, every single southern college town. So I want to come back to the front here because we want to appreciate a little bit about the architecture and the build up. As we head upstairs, Level 3 is a perfect zoning for the owner of this home because you get to enjoy the front part of the home as your main resting area and then you have another room at the back and that could be a full wardrobe space as well as a study room right within your home. Level 2 is perfect because there are three rooms and a huge family area right here. Why do people buy detached? Because they appreciate the fact that on your left and right flank of the home, you need to maintain a 2 meter setback. As we walk towards the back, there's actually an external bathroom entryway towards your enclosed kitchen and then you have this 
external shed here that you can use as an additional storage. It has its own set of windows and this can be a perfect helper's room. So as we walk towards this portion, there's also like a mini bus stop here. It's a wonderful world. When you look at this architecture here, if you notice, these are designs basically for your rain to not just flow down your wall. So basically you can see that there's like a roundish shape there and these are all very beautifully done. So if we were to walk back here, there's this very nice balance of concrete wall at the side. These are nice metal structures with wooden panels in between. So that gives you quite a nice feel. Then as we come in, Building a dream but of it came true till you were here with Something to note is that there are three different zonings and maybe you'll be wondering, hey Melvin, there's this like step down. So traditional homes, usually landed properties built before the 2000 seasons. They love to have split dining and living. So this was the in thing in the past. Landed owners love to have this because they want to have that separation field. Dining means dining. Living room means living room. There's no combination. So this still is a good hosting space because the living and dining is still seamless. Now, Something to note is that if you have young children at home, what you can do here is that you can put up glass panels all the way around this height and then of course at the top, maybe you can insert metal steel or aluminum bars and of course leave the centre part for your walkway. So that will then ensure safety of course for your young kids at home. Second thing is that to future-proof the home, make this home a little bit wheelchair friendly. This part here, we can design a ramp, put in a steel plate base and then the ramp will then start on from there and then you can come towards this particular entrance. Fill this fabulous things. This is a fantastic place for hosting. You have a nice formal dining as well as this breakfast table zone, separate sink, right at the dry kitchen area with bottom storages, top hung cabinetry. Now, I love the setup of the kitchen. Why am I always my own enemy? Stronger is something I wanna be. Hope keeps on breaking on the kitchen floor. I want more than this. A super squarish kitchen, two sink system, cabinetry are all brand new. You have an L panel. These are concrete tiles at the base area. You have a lot of storage space. This is a nice center console and this is the part that you can put in your huge two-door fridge. If you are wondering, hey, you know, there's this DB box right here. So what you can do here is that this can be boxed up with a full panel cabinetry system that is not too thick. You can utilize the right and the left with small little pockets of shelving for condiments. And this is a perfect example of how you can utilize this space. A pain is just a season, all the worst things always meant. Before we head upstairs, you're gonna see an additional powder room right here for your guests. So this is beautifully done. So level one is very self-sufficient. Just check out the amount of brightness coming into this home. And you have a lot of privacy because the fact that you're at a corner plot is also cooling because of the general direction. And uh, we wanna head upstairs right now, have a look at the bedrooms. Never felt love like this. So, high. so we are visiting level 2 now and of course I'm going to interview our inside sales team listing managers. Alright, this is Joanne, this is Yongjun. Come, draw us around. So on this floor itself, this level 2, you actually have 3 bedrooms in total. So you have a lot of multiple different usage. On my left, there are 2 different rooms and all the rooms are actually en suite. When you come on in, actually very spacious. Right now, we're kind of setting up this space as like a workout room, you can do your fitness, yoga here. The good thing is because it's en suite, right after the exercise, you can head on in, have a shower before you continue the rest of the day. All the lightings and the AC are already up, ready for you to move in. All the things that make you The other one over here, this is actually set up as a bedroom. Single size, but definitely can go up to queen size if you need. The bathroom here is slightly larger, also great for you to just come in and use. Extremely squarish for this room. Huge window panes that allows you to look out and you get a good opening here. So wind flow, extremely great as well. Okay. Yeah. Joanne, bring us through the materials used for the home. We have timber strip flooring. So this is actually a upper middle band kind of building material. And if you notice behind Melvin, the doorway here is also larger and wider. Flooring for the bathroom also all fully tiled up, even the walls itself. And if you look at all the switches, actually all these are also a premium grade uh, electric switches by Schneider. So all these are also costing about two times more than the usual mass market brands. How much does one switch cost? <laughs> no lah, why it's so expensive? Maybe about 40 to 50 dollars. Oh, a normal switch is how much? Maybe half of that, $20. 
All right. Yong Jun, show us the other room. What is this balcony used for? Instead of using this space internally, the owners decided that they want to have also like a mini balcony outside of the common area. So I think the next one we can show maybe is the, the junior en suite. Things are naked. The layout is, is quite unique in the sense that because this house is built like a ship, so essentially your junior ensuite also has this kind of design. The owner has also done it in a very smart manner in such that they use all different panels of windows for this curved area. What you see here is actually a queen size bed. Obviously, a king size is no issue as well. So likewise for the bathroom, there's also done such that it's grayscale in terms of the theme so that it matches the whole theme of the house. A piece of me keeps pulling on you like an anchor's weight. I think right here, either you can do like a half height console table to place in some of your books and display items, or it could just be a study desk. Because actually, the wind flow sometimes looking out at the pool or the trees, you get some inspiration. It's a great view. So actually I think. Here is, yeah. um, right opposite you, there's no other than the holes directly in close proximity. The next, I mean, that, that lander home is there, but it's very far away. There's a Chiu Chen playground there. Chu tree tree chair. Ayah, jala. Downstairs, just I say wrongly, oh. Okay, this portion there's a nice corner. Oh, there's no wardrobe, so this is the part for wardrobes. Can put your L panel right here. Actually, this room is very good. So you all recommend this to be a junior master. Yes. Okay, we need to talk about what we can do with the family zone. I think for a family zone, for example, if you have guests on a lower level, we can use it as a secondary zone. By the way, Joanne is our experienced specialist. She's very, in Hokkien, we call gaozhe, with like, like a placement of stuff on. Okay, Joanne, bring us through. How will you design this space? I think maybe uh, sofa-wise could be along this aisle. If you notice here, we have a sort of triangular, small little balcony. Owner actually still wanted to keep this family area rather regular in size without extending out. So I would think small little bin bag or maybe one seater couch right here. Bookshelf, bookcase could be over here as well. For the stairway landing right here, we have about 1.2 meters. Under the stairway, that could be maybe your storage to put on your items. Triangular version. Yes, correct. But otherwise, I think family hall on the second floor landing is also very good because it also allows family members who are in the different rooms sometimes to just get outside and chill instead of all being cooked up in their own rooms to also sort of promote that family cohesion and togetherness. Lah. So I think it's a great area for everyone to just gather around. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, let's go to level three. You can see so Joanne, why do you recommend level three to be the master room? So you think that converting this entire third floor as your master room is actually also a great idea because if you take a look at the master bedroom itself you do get an opening to the balcony but that will mean that maybe for your work from home or your work desk area it might be a little bit more limited because we would think here is a great space to flank out your full wardrobe then in a sense you have another uh, room so that one is actually another great space for you to utilize as your study area you can easily fit up a huge study desk, do up some shelvings all the way to the ceiling as well. And over at the other corner, against the wall, could be somewhere where you want to place your couches, your sofa, maybe sometimes invite your friends up to just chill. So actually, the entire level too, you can just occupy it as the master of this home itself and just take it as your own. So you get a full floor access and privacy as well. So this room can be your home office. It can also be like a full walk-in wardrobe area so you can flank the entire perimeter of the wall line. Especially this portion also. This can be like a full-on wardrobe space before you enter into the ensuite. So I think fantastic space as a home office. But I think it should be more like a home office and double as a wardrobe space. So if you notice, all the bedrooms are ensuite. And then you have your own private balcony. Wow, look at that. It's very quiet here. Okay, okay, so uh, bring us through the view here. What do you see here? This view, right, is actually the very reason why this one is the main master ensuite. It's a similar layout to the junior ensuite, but what you do get is this private balcony space that you see outside. So this one is like the head of the ship. So in other words, when you come out, right, you as if like you're on Titanic, you know, then you see then, <laughs> and you see. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, you do alone now. Yeah. Joanne will show you how it's done.
so in other words this place is very very serene there's very very little private developments in this area so what you do get uh, in this area in the southern part of Singapore is that other than the shoreline you get a lot of sea but you also get a lot of green spaces in this area at the back what you see there is actually part of the southern region <laughs> Let's talk about the demographics of the buyers here. So the buyers actually come from different areas. Main ones would be naturally people who work nearer to the southern part of Singapore. NUH, doctors are actually one of them. Professors as well from NUS. There are a lot of parents also buy this area because they also want their kids to be enrolled into NUS also. We need to talk about the price in conjunction with other kinds of properties right here around these regions because if you are a Singaporean and let's say if you have an overall quantum budget around this range which is about six over a million dollars one way to look at it is to look at the free whole new launches around here so the latest one is Terra Hill so there are about 200 over units right there 38% have been sold the largest unit right there which is the 5 beta 1008 plus square feet free whole status is going at about 5 over a million dollars so if you look at this the land is 3035 square feet build up is approximately 5000 square Feet. Of course, landed and strata condos is very hard to do a one-to-one apple-to-apple comparison because families that love to buy penthouses and big units in condos, they love the facilities. So what I'm trying to share is that if you multiply the 5 beta unit at Terra Hill, you times 2, it takes you about 10 odd million dollars to own something with about 3,900 square feet. And if you are Singaporean, if you have a choice to buy a landed, this can be a very good entry into a freehold landed plot for legacy. All right, so we have come to the end of this home tour. Joanne and uh, Yongju, anything to talk about? Coming to this property itself, it's really the price point and to come in with a detached status right now at this point in time to gain that first mover advantage because a few years down the road when all the land plots or all the developments around you have been developed, of course prices are going to skyrocket even further. But you being an owner right here, holding on to this detached freehold status is gonna secure all your strategy and helps you to secure your position right here. Also like to add on, this plot of land is actually very close to the greater southern waterfront. So this area is actually, I would say, like an unpolished gem. Alright, so if you want to have a look at this place, give a call to Joanne and Yongjun. Their numbers are right here. They'll be very happy to show this property. Contact us anytime. We can conduct open houses over the weekend for you. And if you want to bring down a family to have a look at this very beautiful detached home, it's a extremely great opportunity to enter this at a nice quantum of six and a half million. So we'll see you on the next land of home tour. Cheers. Bye. It's also like a mini bus stop here. Oh. Why do people like to create bus stops with me at home? <laughs> Yesterday I've been to a one landed home also similarly have a bus stop with it. I just don't know. <laughs> There's this uh, bus stop trend here. Thanks for showing us around. Thanks for doing half the home tour. <laughs> Great. Hey, just as I was, I was filming downstairs, y'all can hear everything I said. So I pronounced wrongly, it's supposed to be Chui Chien.